In August 1986, during the 31st General Council of the United Church of Canada at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, a teepee was erected by First Nations delegates. Elder Alberta Billy, representing the All Native Circle Conference, courageously called the church to account for its complicity in the suffering of the people it claimed to love. On that night, after typical United Church discussion and voting, moderator the Right Reverend Robert Smith sat with elders and offered words of apology on our behalf for the ways the church had contributed to the dismantling of a sacred spiritual path and the destruction of Indigenous culture. Another apology followed 12 years later, specifically for complicity in the suffering inflicted by the residential school system. As we know, apology is hollow without a conscious repairing of relationship. So to that end, the apology was received, but not accepted as complete. This cairn was built to remember the historic act and, more importantly, the commitment to reconciliation. 35 years in, we ask, how is our walk from apology to action progressing? Let's recall those historic words that light our way. To do for you a welcome song. This song was taught to us by Maggie Paul, who is a Passamaquoddy. It was given Anishinaabe words by the late Sarah Ganawabi, who is a longtime member of our group. We are singing it to you today to welcome you to this special event. Long before my people journeyed to this land, your people were here. And you received from your elders an understanding of creation and of the mystery that surrounds us that was deep and rich and to be treasured. We did not hear you when you shared your vision. In our zeal to tell you of the good news of Jesus Christ, we were closed to the value of your spirituality. We confused Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and height of the gospel of Christ. We imposed our civilization as a condition of accepting the gospel. We tried to make you be like us. And in so doing, we helped to destroy the vision that made you what you were. As a result, you and we are poorer. And the image of the creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we are meant to be by God. We ask you to forgive us and to walk together with us in the spirit of Christ so that our peoples may be blessed and God's creation healed. The apology was acknowledged and received with grace to be considered by the Indigenous Church before making a response. In 1988, at the 32nd General Council, the Indigenous Church acknowledged the apology, expressing its hope that the Church would live into its words. Mrs. Edith Memnuk, a representative of the All Native Circus Circle Conference said, the apology made to the native people of Canada by the United Church of Canada in Sudbury in August, 1986, has been a very important step forward. It is heartening to see that the United Church of Canada is a forerunner in making this apology to native people. 
The All Native Circle Conference has now acknowledged your apology. Our people have continued to affirm the teachings of the Native way of life. Our spiritual teachings and values have taught us to uphold the sacred fire, to be guardians of Mother Earth, and strive to maintain harmony and peaceful coexistence with all peoples. We only ask of you to respect our sacred fire, the creation, and to live in peaceful coexistence with us. We recognize the hurts and feelings will continue amongst our people, but through partnership and walking hand in hand, the Indian spirit will eventually heal. Through our love, understanding, and sincerity, the brotherhood and sisterhood of unity, strength, and respect can be achieved. The Native people of the All Native Circle Conference hope and pray that the apology is not symbolic, but that these are the words of action and sincerity. We appreciate the freedom for culture and religious expression. In the new spirit this apology has created, let us unite our hearts and minds in the wholeness of life that the Great Spirit has given us. This exchange has been at the center of our work to make right this broken relationship, to bring about healing and new life so that both parties can walk together and with God in a good way. Maxine McVeigh has been a leader for us in that endeavor, in Sudbury and beyond. She was here that night and shares the impact it has had on her life. I had the privilege of being at that 1986 General Council meeting, and I will never forget when Alberta Billy stood up and she shared her story and called on the United Church to apologize, including for our role in residential schools. I was deeply moved by her story and the pain and anguish she experienced being taken from her family, her language, and her culture. I was horrified. My church that I loved had been had been part of an institution that had taken small children from their homes, denying them their language and their culture, leaving many parents and grandparents and whole communities sad, sad and mourning. The experience of the church's apology has flamed my passion to work for right relations, reconciliation and healing and justice for all people. I've been involved with the, with the Right Relations Committee now for about 25 years, first with Manitou Conference initially, and now as part of the team for the Right Relations Resource Team for the Canadian Chill Region. One of our goals over the years has been to provide education for our faith communities. Many of our faith communities are now acknowledging what First Nations territory their faith community is worshiping on. And another resource is a minute for right relations to promote understanding of our First Nations culture. I've always been grateful to Art Solomon and his helper Peter for the many hours of the labor and the laughter and the time spent building this memorial cairn. And that experience flames my love for my Indigenous brothers and sisters and continues to call me to continue that journey, to find ways to walk together, to respect one another, listen and learn with and from one another. Over the years, our denomination has taken steps on our journey with our First Nations brothers and sisters but we still have a long path ahead of us. Lisa Blair, Blair will now share some concrete actions 
that you want, you may want to take both as individuals and communities of faith to help put the words of the apology into action. Megwitch. My name is Lisa Blay, and I'm a member of the Right Relations Resource Team and the Faith Formation and Outreach Minister at Trinity United Church in North Bay. I'm a Haudenosaunee woman living and working in North Bay, a city that is nestled between Lake Nipissing and Trout Lake, on lands and near waters that have sustained many Indigenous peoples from time immemorial to the present. Anishinaabe, Cree, Algonquin, Ojikree, Métis, and in recent history, settler peoples from many different nations have called the areas in and around the Apology Cairn home. As people of the Apology, we seek to live together in peace and friendship, honoring the treaties, seeking justice, and walking together in the spirit of reconciliation. I've been asked to reflect on how we, as people of faith and people of the Apology, can put those historic words of apology into action. Here are my top five. Number one, seek out and celebrate the historic and current contributions of Indigenous peoples in your region. Artists, storytellers, knowledge keepers, athletes, leaders, and other notable people. Number two, listen and respond to the challenges that Indigenous people both on and off reserve are experiencing in your region. Number three, decolonize your relationship with Indigenous peoples. That means recognizing and valuing the knowledge and experience that Indigenous people have. Number four, become an ally and an advocate. Use your voice to uplift some of the challenges that Indigenous peoples are facing. Language, culture, land, health, all needs to be restored, both independent of and with the support of non-Indigenous people. Number five, we have already been given the framework for justice and reconciliation the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Urge our government to uphold and implement UNDRIP into law. Yawa, miigwech, merci, thank you. Now to inspire our journey, we welcome the very Reverend Jordan Cantwell. As a result, you and we are poorer and the image of the creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we are meant by God to be. This is why the work of reparations and right relationship building is essential. It is part of our healing journey, healing for settler peoples as well as Indigenous peoples. If I don't understand my own need for healing from my bondage to colonial and white supremacist attitudes, then even my best efforts at reconciliation will likely perpetuate and entrench colonial ways, not dismantle them. I must come to terms with the ways in which the image of the Creator has become twisted, blurred in me. How my participation in racist and colonial structures distorts my own humanity, as well as that of my Indigenous relatives. Once I see this truth clearly, and feel its impact on my relationship with God, myself, and my neighbors, then I will be fully invested in the transformation that needs to happen in me, in our church, and in society. Then I won't run from the hard and humbling work of building right relations, because I'll know that this is the medicine I need to heal, to become whole. This is about my liberation and your liberation. The liberation of each and every one of us, which is all bound up together. May we have the courage and the humility to embrace our healing journey, that together we may be liberated to become what we are meant by God to be.